Bibles to the Gospel of John. The Gospel of John. It's the fourth book in the New Testament. Fourth book in the New Testament. What's the first book in the New Testament, y'all? Come on, tell me. What's the second one? What's the third one? What's the fourth one? What's the tenth one? Yeah, I don't know either, but it's in there. It's in there somewhere. I could, I could figure it out, though. I, I could figure it out. John chapter 11, I'll just uh, remind you, this is not one of those quiet churches. If you hadn't figured that out yet, and uh, if you say, well, this is one of those loud churches, it's kind of too loud for me. Well, uh, the drums are on this side, so if you actually want things quieter, you, that's probably a better side for you. If you like things a little louder, then you might want to come over here, just to give you a little heads up. John chapter 11, y'all ready? John chapter 11, and I'm going to minister along this line, and, and uh, the Lord gave me last week and this week together. And today, I'm calling this Right on Time. Amen. Right on Time. John chapter 11, verse 1 says, Now a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary who anointed the Lord with fragrant oil and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore, the sister sent to him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. He whom you love is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Verse 5. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. He loved them. It's important to note that, that they knew that he loved them, and he knew that he loved them. So... When he heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. Two more days. Now let's just jump down to verse 17, continue along in the story between this family and Jesus. Verse 17. So when Jesus came, he found that he had already been in the tomb four days. So now we've got a number of days that have passed now, don't we? Because not only did he stay in the place that he was two days... But it's been four days since he's been dead. So there's a number of days that have passed right here. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles away. And many of the Jews had joined the women around Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Now Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary was sitting in the house. Now Martha said to Jesus, Lord... If you had been here, my brother would not have died. You might want to underline that, circle it, highlight it, whatever. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would, would not have, have died. Now, just, just that alone says a lot. Um, first of all, there's a, there's a bit of, uh, hey, Lazarus, whom you love, you know, was dying, and I sent for you. Yeah. And... You stayed two more days, and he's been dead four days. Well, this is like a week-long process at least, right? So he's, he's been dead. Um, you know we love you. Um, we know that you love us, right? We know that you got the word that we sent for you. Um, and if, you anybody ever told the Lord, if, you know, if you would have only done this, God, you know, it would have worked out much better for me, right? If, if, you would have only, if, <laughs> if you would have only come when I told you to, that would have worked out much better for me, not only for me, for, for my brother, for my sister Mary. Now everybody's crying. Everybody's up in a tizzy. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's rough. He's already, he's already in the grave. I mean, this is, this is bad. This is real, real bad. That's, that's one side of it, and that's very, very true. But, but there's also another side of it that is actually uh, uh, extremely filled with faith, which is if you had been here, he would have lived. That means we believe enough in you, in your power, in who you are, and your goodness, and your love, that he would not have died of this sickness. He would have been healed. So there's two sides to this, which is where a lot of Christians are, which is, Lord, I believe in you, but you're just late. 
Lord, I believe in you, but you've missed it in my life. You know, you hadn't showed up exactly when, where, and how I was hoping, praying, and had faith for, right? If you had only been here, my, my brother would not have died, verse 22. But even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. So she, she remains in faith. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. She's not even uh, considering uh, the fact that this could actually happen today. He said, your brother will rise again. She, she didn't say, today? She said, okay, well, yeah, later, you know. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may li- die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, and this is a powerful confession of faith. Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. Anybody else believe this, that confession? You are the Christ, the Son of God. This is important. And when she had said these things, she went her way and secretly called Mary. I wonder why she did that secretly. Anyway, secretly called Mary, her sister, saying, the teacher has come is calling for you. And as soon as, she, as soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came to Jesus. Now, Jesus had not yet come into the town, but was in the place where Martha met him. Then the Jews were, who were with her in the house and comforting her, when they saw that Mary rose up quickly and went out, followed her, saying, she is going to the tomb to weep there. Then when Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying to him, what's she going to say? Lord... If you had been here, my brother would not have died. How many know it's the second time Jesus heard that in the same day? If you had been here, if you had been here, sounds to me like, like her and her sister have had this conversation in the house. Like, where is Jesus at? I mean, anybody ever had that time in your life where you sit in the house and like, I love the Lord, he's been good and all that, but where is he at today? Sure could use a little help today. If you, yeah, if you had been here, y'all are also holy. Forgive me for even thinking that you would ever have that thought. I have had that thought. <laughs> would not have died. Therefore, when Jesus saw her weeping and, and the Jews who came with her weeping, he groaning in his, groaned in his spirit and was troubled. And he said, where have you laid him? And they said to him, Lord, come and see. And Jesus wept, so, showing the uh, not only spiritual connection here and the love that he had for him as far as God's love, but an, uh, an emotional connection here, relational connection. Then, then the Jews said, see how he loved him. And some of them said, could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind also have kept this man from dying? Verse 38, y'all don't mind reading a lot of the Bible in church, do you? Okay, good. Then Jesus, again groaning in himself, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a, and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there is a stench, for he has been dead for days. I mean, it just seems like they love him. They believe in Jesus, and, but, but why roll the stone away? We're not understanding it's going to stink. I mean, the only thing that's going to happen is it's going to stink. That's the only thing that's possibility right now is this is going to like, you, you know, you're like, you're, you're tearing, uh, you're opening the wound further. Did I not say that, that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? <laughs> then they took away the stone from the place where the, the dead man was lying. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. And I know that you always hear me, but because of the people who are standing by, I said this, that they may believe that you sent me. Now, when he had said these things, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he who had died came out, bound, hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was wrapped with a cloth. And Jesus said to them, loose him and let him go. Loose him and let him go. A, a permanent problem was no longer permanent. A, a dead situation, dead person, no longer dead. Right? Anybody ever, anybody ever had that thought? And I've, I've mentioned it a couple times, but anybody ever had that thought, God... You're a bit late. 
uh, thank you. You're a bit late, you know. And of course, on our, our scale of time, which we think is, you know, 10 years is a long time, of course, in the mind of God, it's just it's nothing, of course, right? But Lord, you're late in my life, you know. You're, you're, you're missing it here, right? Like I've called unto you. I know you heard me because I know what your word says. You hear when I pray. I know you hear what I'm saying right now. But it seems like I'm still in this situation. I don't have time to wait for you. I don't have time for this. You're, you're late. And it just seems like God is on a different time, time scale. My, my wife went on a, a missions trip to, uh, uh, what's, where'd y'all go? Saint, where'd you go? St. Thomas. They, when they went to St. Thomas, and um, I'm not going to name the people or the church, but um, church would start at a certain time. It would start at a certain time. Like what, 10 o'clock? 9 o'clock, but it wouldn't actually start till 11-ish. And so um, she would say, well, you know, what are, well, everybody's on island time. Well, everybody's on island time. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. You go on vacation, you're like, I'm taking the watch off, putting the phone away. I don't have to be anywhere at any time. It's all, it's all good. And it, it, you just kind of own another whatever. And other people may be uh, buzzing around y'all, you know, but you're just like, hey, we can have lunch at 11. We can have lunch at 2. We can have lunch at 5. We can have lunch. Whenever I want to call lunch, lunch is lunch. This is lunch. Right, just kind of a you kind of get on a on a different time, and 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 so you know they were kind of on a time there, their own little island time, and and I know that God is faithful, and I know the promises of God are yes and amen, but it it seems to me that God is on a different time scale than I am, yeah. on a different time scale than I am. I mean, I would think Abraham thought that after the Lord promised him he was going to be the father of many nations and he don't have no kids for 10, 15, 20, 25 years. It goes by, Lord, you're not in my time frame. You missed it, God. You missed it, God. This, this, isn't, this isn't how I thought it was going to be. But yet, Jesus is always right on time. He's always right on time. Uh, uh, growing up in church, there, there used to be a song that, that we had sing, and it, it goes something like this because I'm such a great singer. He's an on-time God. Yes, he is. He's an on-time. All right, y'all want to hear all the rest of that. And there's something in there that, that kind of irritates me, but it says he may not be there when you want him. But it'll be there right on time. And, I, you know, I'm a faith person, so I don't even like to say that. But, but at the same time, it's not that he's not there when you want him. Because he's always present and, and available and a help. And he never leaves you nor forsakes you. He just wants you to stay in faith in the process. Because he's right on time. He's, I heard something my dad said just a few days ago. He says, God's got some things working that you can't see, that you've got to stay in faith in order to see them. That means you're believing him for something, and you have your faith in him, and even though it seems like he has failed you, and what you are believing for is now dead and gone, but when he shows up, nothing, no one, no situation is too dead for him. Because he's right on time. Jesus strolled up in town right on time. He's, he's, he's right on. Y'all thought I was late, didn't you? Y'all thought I missed it, didn't you? But this is for the glory of God. This is for the glory of God. I, I like the way I heard uh, T.D. Jake say this years ago. He said, it seems like God likes to wait till all the cards are stacked against you. All the cards, it just seems like there's no way out. There's no way this can work out. There's no way this is going to be for my favor or for my good. There's no way that, that this can work out for good except for God. And then when God shows up, just like he promises. Amen. Now, he's never left you nor forsake you. It's just the fulfillment of promise. Praise God. 
Everybody say, God's right on time. One more time, say, God's right on time. Now, let's look at one more story. I wanted to look at two this morning. We could just stop right there. That'd be good, wouldn't it? Just be like, ah, that's enough. Let's go home. God's right on time. Mark chapter 5 and verse 21 It says, well, I'll give you a second. Y'all are actually turning. I'll wait. That's worth the wait. Looks like I got a, a Hobbs family reunion back there, y'all. Good to see the whole, well, mixture, but anyway. Mark chapter 5. Y'all ready? Verse 21. Now when Jesus had crossed over again by boat to the other side, a great multitude gathered to him, and he was by the sea. And behold, one of the rulers of the synagogue came, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet and begged him earnestly, begged him earnestly. That means he's intensely asking, saying, my little daughter lies at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her that she may be healed and she will live. How many of you know that's a lot of faith in Jesus right there? She will live. So Jesus went with him, and a great multitude followed him and thronged him. Now, if you were Jairus, about how happy would you be right now? Come on, how happy would you be right now? Like, this is what I need. He's the one that's the answer, right? This is going to happen. I've got faith in him, and he's coming. He's going to be right on time. I know he's going to be right on time. Anybody ever been in the middle of a church service? You got a word in the middle of a church service? And you're like, yes, he's going to be right on time. And then and still kind of crapped out later, you know. It's just like, ah, oh, whoa, what happened there? That's what's about to happen to Jairus. Forgive me for saying that word. You shouldn't say that in church. It's a curse word in some nations, but not ours. Just a slightly rude. Okay. Apologize for being slightly rude. I said but last Sunday, and now I'm saying the other, the C word that I won't let my children say. Okay. Um, forgive me, children that are in here. We do have a children's ministry, by the way. We don't allow them to say those words in children's ministry. But for us grown folks, I'm sorry, uh, way off track. Let's get back on track. So Jesus went with him. And y'all have said worse, okay? So don't look at me <laughs> holier than thou, judgmentally. I know you. God does anyway. So Jesus went with him, and a great multitude followed him and thronged him. Again, this is going to be a great day. But now we enter into uh, something else happening here, which is actually the passage that most of the time we look at when we look at Mark chapter 5. Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years. And had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. But when she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if, I, if, I only, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. Praise God. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that the power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? Yeah. But his disciples said to him, you see the multitude thronging you, and you say, who touched me? And he looked around to see her who had done this thing, but the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, verse 34, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Well, now there's a whole other side of this, which is she made time. <laughs> she made time. But, but notice again, verse 35, while he was still speaking, some came from the ruler of the synagogue's house who said, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? While, while Jesus was saying, daughter, your faith has made you well. The exact time that he's saying this to this woman, Jairus is standing there close enough to hear what's being said there, and now he's hearing something different. The time 
at the same time she's getting her right on time, he's getting the worst news of his life. Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? Someone else is getting their good news? You're getting your bad news. When you thought you was getting your answer, someone else just ran around the church because they got theirs. Someone else just called you on the phone. Hey, can you believe what God did in my life? And at the same time when you've been believing for something similar in your life, they get their stuff. And you, on the other hand, lose it all. And what they say at the very end is, is, is really important. Why trouble the teacher any further? Why, why, why even go forward anymore? Why even try, right? Why even try? What's the point? I mean, it was going to work out good. Clearly, it, it didn't work out. So what's the point of even moving forward anymore? What, what's the point of even trying anymore? What's the point? Just, don't, just let him go on about his business, and we'll just go home, and, you know, we'll do, we'll do what we need to do, and we'll, we'll bury, you know, or your daughter, and we'll mourn, and we'll grieve, and we'll do what we got to do, because that's what we got to do now. This is our current situation. Um, you know, sure happy for, you know, the woman with issue of blood and all that, you know, but for us, this isn't the right time for us. This is a bad time for us. This isn't good. It's too late. It's too late. Not Anytime when you're believing God for something and you hear from anyone or the enemy, it's too late. Just recognize where that's coming from. Because as far as God is concerned, as far as Jesus is concerned, Nothing is ever to anything. Nothing is ever to anything as long as God is still on the throne. Nothing is to anything as long as God is still alive. As soon as Jesus heard, now it's cool because Jesus heard, he heard, while he was saying, he heard what was said. As soon as he heard, The word that was spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, do not be afraid, only believe. Do not be full of fear. I don't know if y'all have kids, but this this girl's 12 years old. If you have kids and you heard this, she's sick, but not only is she sick, she's dead now. And you heard from God, do not be afraid, do not fear, only believe. Whoo! Jesus, you're asking me to really believe something now. Only, now I like that because he says only only that means exclusively exclusively nothing else no mixture no if no whatever exclusively believe exclusively y'all look at me exclusively believe only believe the only thing he's asking for this fella to do now is just believe can you still believe can you still can you still stay in faith Can you still believe even when it looks impossible? Can you still believe when it looks like it's too late? Can you still believe when it looks like God's too late? Can you still believe when everybody else is crying and mourning and saying, let's just go ahead and bury the thing? But God says, don't be afraid. Exclusively believe. Can you still believe me the same way that you did when it looked like there was hope? Can you still believe me like you did when you looked like we can work this thing out, but now it looks like there's no way it can turn out. There's no way it can work out. Can you still hold on to me and my word and what I've spoken? Can you still trust me when it looks like all trust and hope is lost? Like you told me you was coming and we went. But you showed up too late because somebody else stopped us on the way. No. God is able to get somebody else's right time and your right time at the same time. Yeah. Woo! (laughs) He's right on time every time. He's right on time 
every time. He's right on time every time. He is enough for your neighbor. He's enough for your family. He's enough for you. He's enough for your kids. He's enough for our city. He's enough for our state. He's enough for our country. He's enough for this world. He's enough for every hungry heart, everyone who will believe Jesus is enough. He's enough, and he's right on time. He's right on time. He's right on time. The problem with many is they stop believing. They hit the disappointment. They hit the discouragement. They see something with their eyes and go, no, that don't work. That, that, that ain't going to work out now. I thought it was going to happen. I thought it was going to happen this way, you know. I thought he's going to walk with me, you know, get there. Everybody's going to have a party. She's healed. Awesome. I wasn't expecting to hear the words, she's gone, you know. Especially concerning something like this, so closely related to his heart. What could matter more than his daughter? Nothing. Yeah. Nothing could matter more. Take the, take the car, you know, t- burn the house down. You know, all this stuff. You take all the stuff. Not my kids, you know. Seems that's exactly what the enemy tries to do. Whatever is closest to you, he'll try to use it to bring disappointment, discouragement, and shake your faith. But exclusively, only, nothing wavering, not deluded, and not double minded. Believe. Stay in faith. And he permitted no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. Then he came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and saw a tumult and those who wept and wailed loudly. This is even more depressing. People are crying loud. We're not talking about like a little sob. We're talking about like wailing, y'all. This is tragic. All right. When he came in, he said to them, why make this commotion and weep? The child is dead is not dead but sleeping. It's like, well, why y'all crying? I mean, that almost sounds rude, doesn't it? Why weep? She's not dead, she's asleep. And they ridiculed him. Well, what did he do to the, to the ridiculers? Well, he kicked him out the house. I mean, he kicked him out the house. I mean, that's a whole other message. Some people you do have to put on the outside. I love you. We'll have dinner later, but for now, I got to exclusively believe. And you're just going to wail at my problems, then I can't have that. Go cry to somebody else. I'm believing the master. He took the father and the mother of the child and those who were with him and entered where the child was lying. Then he took the child by the hand and said to her, uh, Telitha Kumai which is translated, little girl, I say to you, arise. And immediately the girl arose and walked, for she was 12 years of age. And they were overcome with great amazement. But he commanded them strictly that no one should know it and said that something should be given her to eat. How practical. What I love about this is that It's a tragic, horrendous, worst day of our life kind of situation. And then when Jesus shows up right on time, let's have some biscuits and gravy. (laughs) What I'm saying? Where's the fried chicken? Like, what? It's time to eat, y'all. Let's get her right back to what a 12 year old little girl should be doing. Let's get us some food. Everything that wasn't right in a moment was right. What if Jairus had listened and said, y'all are right. We shouldn't trouble Jesus anymore. I mean, let's let him go somewhere else. I mean, he's a God-fearing kind of guy, right? I mean, he he came to his feet and worshiped. he's, He's a good guy. I'm happy so-and-so. At least somebody got their miracle. 
you know, this is, it's too late for us. It's too late for us. No. Jesus goes from looking at the woman and saying, you're made whole, to looking at the man. Yeah. Only believe. only believe exclusively nothing else nothing mixed in there just stay in faith just stay in faith stay in faith I'm not sure how how challenging it was for that walk from when he heard his daughter was dead to when he finally got to the house but I'm sure every step was challenging to stay in faith right Especially when you get closer to the house and you can hear the wailing. Yeah. You can hear, you can hear him crying. Yeah. You can hear the voice of tragedy has hit. Yes. But he just keeps walking with a master. Yes. Only believe. Hallelujah. Only believe. Thank you, Lord. That's all I got in me is to believe him. Amen. All I've got in me is to believe him. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. I am the resurrection and I am the life. <laughs> oh, man. What great hope we should have for our future, but what great hope we should have for, for our day today. He is the resurrection. He is the life. Everybody say, God's right on time. One more time. Say, God's right on time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, uh, growing up, in, in, uh, and my dad was a pastor at the church, my dad and mom. Growing up in this church, you know, went to junior high, went to Brame, and I went to high school at Ash right here close. And, and um, you know, many times me and my sister and my mom, we'd go home before my dad would come home. And we'd go home and homework or whatever we needed to do, and then my mom would make some dinner, you know, she'd, she'd cook something, not all the time, but you know, she, she, she liked to do that. She liked to have family time and family dinner or something like that, you know, as much as possible. So, you know, when we could do that, she'd do that. We'd be there and she'd be cooking and all that. And, and um, you know, lots of stuff happening around the church all the time, you know. Dad's got a lot of meetings and appointments and people to talk to and stuff happening and all this is going on. And, uh, you know, and so the food would be ready, you know. Food would be ready. I'd say, Mom, you know, can we eat now? No, we're waiting on Dad. Okay. You know, go out and do something else. Come back. Can we eat now? I'm, I'm getting hungry. I'm getting really hungry. Time to eat. You know, I'm a skinny white boy, but I can eat, y'all. <laughs> no, no, we're going to wait on Dad. We're going to wait. We won't, we won't wait for him. And finally, you know, she'd call him or something, whatever. And she, finally, she'd say, well... Let's, uh, let's just pray, and we'll eat. So, all right, let's pray. All right, let, let's pray, and then we eat. And just about the time we'd either pray or, or take the first bite, Dad, roll in. <laughs> just, right, just, just roll right in, right when we finally decided to eat. And then Dad come in and say, hey. We'd say, hey, you're late. He'd go, looks like I'm right on time as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Y'all just started eating? Yeah, we started eating. Yeah, well, I'm right on time then. <laughs> I'm right on time. Amen. We thought he was late, yeah. but he was right on time. Yeah. Romans chapter 5, can we look at this and, and I'll finish up here. Yeah. Romans chapter 5, verse 6, it says, For when we were still without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. The New Living Translation, I love it. It says, when we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time. <laughs> at just the right time and died for us. The, the Message Bible says, Christ arrives right on time. Christ arrives right on time. Well, for us, we're like, yes, amen. He's right on time. How many of y'all glad he went to the cross and paid the price for our sin and was raised again three days later? How many of y'all glad that happened a few thousand years ago? Yeah, yeah, but, but don't, doesn't it seem like he's late, though? Why did he do that sooner? Right? I mean, 
Why wait till it's such a bad mess? Why, why wait for it to just get messier and messier? He says, at just the right time. <laughs> right on time. Christ died for the, the ungodly. Seems like to me he's late for dinner. This is, this is late. This is bad timing. You have bad timing. You don't need to come and die. We're, we're, we're too far away. We're too far off. We're in too bad of a mess. This is too bad. There's no turning back from our sin. Now, anybody ever had that thought when you weren't serving the Lord? Or maybe even you're here today and like, I'm too far off. Like, I'm so far in my mess. There's no turning back now. But yet in the very moment when it seemed like there's no hope for humanity, there's no hope for this world, there's no hope for us, at the very moment it's like, there's no hope for my marriage, there's no hope for my future, there's no hope, I'm giving up on my kids, I'm giving up on my grandkids, there's no reason to believe anything good about them ever again. Right in that moment, right when it seemed like sin abounded, grace, the Lord Jesus Christ, shows up on the scene. Right on time. He's right on time. Right on time. I can promise you this. I sure don't understand everything. But I do know he's on time. I do know he's on time. And I do know I'm going to keep believing it. So what do you do in the meantime? You know, what are you doing? Stay in faith. Amen. Cheer up. Believe God. Amen. That's what Paul said in the middle of a storm. Cheer up. I believe God. It shall be as he told me it would be. Amen. Cheer up. I believe God. Uh, let's stop all the wailing and, my, uh, and, and whining and, and, you know, let's stop all the commotion. All right. Stop all the commotion. Yes. Let's believe God. Amen. Stop all the whatever and let's believe God. Stop everything else and exclusively believe God. Amen. Isaiah 40, it says, wait on the Lord. Wait, wait. It means this, have your expectation upon God. Have your expectation upon him. Have your expectation upon him. You know, we were at a camp meeting in Ramah at Tulsa this past week and and the services start at 7.30 and they can go a little bit long. And then you talk to everybody and it just ends up getting real late at night. And so everything ends up being closed except maybe one or two places. And so one night we're like, you know what? Um, and, you know, we had some friends there and some of the staff was there. And so like, let's just order some pizzas, you know. Let's order some pizzas and we'll eat them in the foyer at the lobby uh, of the hotel. Let's order some pizzas. So order some pizzas and, and uh, whew, you know, they said it's going to be an hour. No. It's all right if you ordered at 5 o'clock and you have dinner at 6 o'clock. But when it's 11 o'clock, midnight's a long ways away, you know. I'm hungry now. But they said they was coming. They said they was going to be there. Gave them the address. Told them I had the money. Come on. They said they was coming. I don't know their face. I don't know the name of the driver. I don't know who the delivery person is. I've never even been to that Papa John's. Come on, better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's. Right? That place. Uh, that, I don't know anything except it's coming. They said it was coming. That's what they said. We all get there, go, go change, get a little more comfortable, come down in the lobby, set some chairs up, you know, get all comfortable. And we're all just sitting there. 1130. 1140, 11.45, they said it was coming. They said it was coming. My stomach is growling, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's beyond growling. It's been growling for three hours. I'm ready for this. Time to eat. I'm dipping in that garlic sauce. You know, y'all know, anybody know what I'm talking about? Like, you don't, I didn't say it was healthy. I'm just saying it, it's good. You talk to the Lord about that yourself, but I'm just saying We're not under the law, we're under grace, but whatever. That, that's, I'm not going to get into all that, y'all. So they said it was coming. So, so I just kept believing. It's going to show up. I just kept, I got my faith in the pizza man. 
I got my faith out there. Exclusively believing. <laughs> Papa John's going to deliver. They're going to deliver. It's going to happen, y'all. It's going to happen. Not only that, we're all sitting around there like something's going to happen. Like 15 of us. We're all believing. We're all in faith together. No one's wailing, you know. We haven't got any bad news or nothing, you know, I guess. But no one's in tears. Everybody's hungry. But we're all in faith, believing the pizza's going to show up. Pizza's going to show up. We know it will. Pizza's going to show up. I didn't even look at my watch. I felt in my heart, now's the time. <laughs> I promise I did. I didn't even look up. Uh, now's the time. It's time, y'all. This, this is the time. This is the time. You, you can ask. Well, I don't know if she noticed. Anyway, I got up out of my seat. I got, uh, the car wasn't there. Guy wasn't banging on the window. The guy working in the lobby didn't say, anybody order pizza? No. I got up, walked out, walked out, looked down there, and then who do I see? I see Darcy and Christine, or who it was, Darcy and Christine, them too. So what you doing? I said, I'm waiting on my pizza. It's going to be here. It's time. I feel like it's time. It's time. I think it's something almost exact. I feel like it's time for the pizza to show up. It's about time for the, and, and as soon as, as, as they walk right up here next to me, pizza guy just rolled right up in front of me. I said, that's my pizza. We had six of them. Is that, that's my pizza. He goes, what room are you? I said, that's my pizza. And nobody else ordered no pizza in this hotel. 501, but this is my pizza. He said, yeah, 501, this is your pizza. I said, yes, it is. You're right on time. And too many times, we have more faith in the pizza delivery man than we do in the Almighty. Like they said, the pizza's coming. It's going to be here. But as far as God's promises are concerned, we're like, well, I don't know. He said, but I don't know. They said, somebody else got their pizza. Mine's hung up somewhere. No, and in the meantime, what do we do? Cheer up. We believe God. My expectation, I'm not sitting here believing him because nothing's going to happen. I'm believing him because he said something was going to happen. It shall come to pass. You know what it shall come to pass means? That means it shall happen, and then I'm going to be living on the other side of it. <laughs> I'm going to be living on the other side of it. And that's when you get into a Psalm 126 stuff, which is we were like them who dream. Our mouth is filled with laughter and our tongue with singing because the Lord has done great things for us. It's like, man, whew, God promised it. It came to pass, and it almost seems too good to be true, even though I was believing it all along. Aren't you thankful for how good God is? Come on, aren't you thankful for His Word?